Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our March Vets Community Connections Careers in the Community webinar. We are excited to have everyone today and our presenters are really going to provide you some excellent information to help influence your approach to the interview process. I am the program manager for Vets Community Connections. I'm also a military spouse and have been um, in multiple duty stations around the world. We are a Coast Guard family, so we've been to Massachusetts, Hawaii, San Diego, Alaska, and we were fortunate enough to come back to San Diego. And I'm excited to share that this is one of my favorite duty stations because of all that San Diego has to offer for our military and veteran community. We will be hosting the event today. And then at the end, as I mentioned earlier, we will have the survey go out to all of you. We do request that you complete the survey. And I personally read each one of those and take them, uh, take them to heart and truly try to build out each careers in the community webinar going forward based on your, your feedback. We will also ask that any questions be put into the chat box. Our team at BCC will monitor that chat box and address those questions at the end of the presentation. If you do not have a question now and you determine maybe there was something you wanted to ask after the fact, we can ask that question to our presenters and provide the information back to you after the webinar. Always feel free to reach out to us because I'm, I am I can share with you, I'm one of those individuals that may not think of it now, but I'll think of it 2 a.m. tomorrow. So <laughs> let us know. We're here to connect you and we will get you that information and those resources. With that said, I would like to introduce you to our Vets Community Connections president and co-founder, Kari McDonough, and she will talk to you about the purpose of these webinars. Kari. Great, thank you, Amy. Uh, great to be on with all of you today. I just wanna share a quick overview of what Vets Community Connections is, is our work in San Diego County. Our focus is to connect our veterans, our military, their spouses, caregivers uh, with all that San Diego offers. Why? Because you can't Google this. We have so much here and that's incredible. And we're so fortunate to have that in this great county, uh, but it's not, it, we wanna be, make sure that you find it and get access to it because the Google search doesn't always work. So our focus is to connect you not only to our government resources, our veteran specific nonprofit resources and our uh, those we are so fortunate to have such incredible veteran and military programming here. But in addition, addition to connect you with the rest of San Diego, um, many times when we look at connecting our veterans, we stop there, government and veteran service organizations. VCC is also looking to connect you with what are nonprofits that are not veteran specific, but still doing some great work. Uh, where are businesses? Where, where, who's hiring and what are they looking for? Um, individuals that can provide you information on recreation, volunteerism, um, going back to school, uh, using that GI Bill, uh, examining what career paths are even out there in the first place, networking so that you can build a home here in San Diego County. Um, that is, you know, meets your dreams. So we're really working to get you connected. That's our name. Uh, we look forward to helping you get connected. Our webinars today are, are part of that mission. Um, and so we're just thankful to, for um, you joining today. And I'll turn it back over to Amy. Thank you, Kari. Uh, our first speakers today will be joining us from the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic. The first ones we have are Jenny Lynn Stroop. She is their outreach coordinator and Ashley Tatum, who is their case manager and also a veteran herself. Jenny Lynn's experience includes herself being a military spouse and she's also the co-host of a podcast called Holding Down the Fort for military families and spouses. And then also in her many years as a military spouse, she's worked with multiple military organizations and spouse groups. Additionally, Jenny Lynn actually worked with the USO in the Metropolitan of New York, and she was a special co event coordinator. During her time with the USO, she actually worked to provide comfort and care for wounded warriors participating in the US Army warrior trials. Jenny Lynn's experience is, is truly invaluable, and we're, we're appreciative of having her here to present for us today. In, in relation with Ashley, Ashley Tatum, as I mentioned, she is a Navy veteran herself, and she's also a former staff member for National University, where she worked within their Department of Veteran Affairs office at 
um, in relation to benefits and enrollments department. She's also passionate, of course, about helping veterans with their mental health and connecting them to resources in the community that will absolutely ensure their success. Ashley is going to share also her firsthand experience in overcoming anxiety of the interview process. And it is something that all of us have at one time or another potentially experienced. And I think this is one of the most beneficial webinars that we can offer to you at this point. So with that said, I will turn this over to Jenny Lynn and Ashley and let them share their experience. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Amy. Good morning. I'm Jenny Lynn. Um, I am the outreach coordinator for the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Veterans Village of San Diego, longest name on the history of the planet. Um, nonetheless, we provide you wonderful mental health services. Uh, as long as you're a post 9-11 era service member, uh, veteran or family member, uh, we are happy to provide you evidence-based uh, treatments for mental health. So, um, Oh, I can't, sorry. Next slide, please. I was trying to move the slides myself. Um, that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> So what do we do? We provide care that is confidential. We take down many of the barriers to care that you would see in traditional counseling. So um, cost is not a barrier to care. And when we can be in person, neither is childcare or transportation as those are two things our clinic provides uh, for our clients. We have short wait times to receive care and all of our staff is military competent, mostly because at our clinic in San Diego, we are who we treat. Like Amy said, I'm a military spouse of over 10 years and so is Ashley and Ashley's also a veteran and that most of our staff is in some way shape or form military affiliated. Um, we also do well right now we're only telehealth but telehealth is something that we have offered the entire time the clinic has been open currently we're 100% telehealth hoping to move to some in person services soon as um, COVID cases continue to dwindle but for now. We are all telehealth and that will continue to be an option long after the pandemic is not a factor. Um, next slide, please. Um, we treat the very typical, um, especially post 9-11 service, um, mental health things like depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, um, adjustment issues is there. And that that's really, we do family care as well as um, children's sessions. So we treat people through individual couples counseling and family counseling. Uh, we do a lot of things with reintegration and adjustment, especially around uh, deployment cycles, grief and loss, family issues, transition challenges. Um, we see a lot of people who are currently transitioning from military service to civilian life, which <laughs> is what we're talking about today. And Ashley will talk more about her experience with how, how to do that well. Um, we have an MD on staff who does a lot of things with uh, sleep and medication. And again, we do great couples counseling, um, which has been a, a, a benefit of being able to do telehealth during the pandemic. We've seen our couples counseling clients uh, go up as people have spent more and more time in their house together. So uh, that is an option too. Next slide, please. So when we think about mental health and interviewing, um, the, we polled a lot of our clinicians for their best how-to tips, like how, how can you best take care of yourself when going into an interview that might be anxiety-inducing uh, and panic-inducing? So really, they're the top three were think, eat, organize. So the first is visualize yourself doing well. Um, one of the things that I do with this is I actually write myself sticky notes and stick them on my computer so I can see them that say like, I know my job. I know my spiel. I know what I'm doing to remind myself that I, I am the expert at, at what I do. I am the expert at who I am. And so those are, that's, that's the think portion is like, think yourself into the role already. So when you're sitting down to interview, you know, tell yourself, you know who you are and your experience and you have all of those options. The next thing is don't skip eating. Um, fueling your body is the best way to fuel your mind. So when you have a, a full tank, so to speak, you're much better able to be clear and concise with your answers. And the last thing is organize. Um, 
being rushed at anything never helps the situation. So if you are unsure of how to get somewhere or what it's going to look like, mapping it out ahead of time is one of the best things you can do. Also kind of thinking through, and Ashley will speak more to this, kind of thinking through some of those things that you might think come up, having some answers that you have already thought through yourself. Next slide, please. Uh, when we think about interviewing and actual counseling, I will say that when I applied for the job I'm currently in, I was in counseling, individual counseling, um, and it is one of the things we talked about because I was with a counselor who knew me well enough to know the things that would be anxiety producing for me, and we talked through them. Um, and they can also kind of help you identify those things that are just... Um, like the, what I call like the soul bullies, like those voices in your head that tell you you aren't doing well and you're not going to do well. Having a licensed clinician um, is really helpful for helping you combat those things that you're, that you are kind of inherently telling yourself. Um, they will help you spot them and help you think through and, and work through how to get rid of them. Um, and another thing they can help you with is just kind of talking through some of those questions. And if you don't want to do that with a licensed therapist per se, you know, finding someone you really trust who's going to be able to walk you through those without judgment and without making faces when, <laughs> when you answer um, is super helpful. So seeking support is another thing that we really um, push at the Cohen Clinic is we would love to see you for mental health, but also trust like trust and use your community around you so seeking support prior to doing something big whether it be an interview or moving or anything is always a good option next slide please and the last uh, tip that came from our clinicians is just breathe um <laughs> breathe in general take deep breaths um it has been proven that that calms your whole system and it's also okay to take a breath between questions it helps your body regulate it gives you time to think it shows that you are thoughtful about a response versus rushing into the first thing that came to mind that you know that may not have been your best answer um and it can just help you kind of calm yourself down and go um go into the next right thing. So breathe. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley to share her experience as a female veteran interviewing for a job. So next slide, please. Thank you, Jenny Lynn. Hi, everybody. I'm Ashley. Um, I am the case manager at the Cohen Clinic, and I already have my sticky note. Jenny Lynn, that was a great uh, tip. Um, clearly, I practice to this day. Um, so yes, I am a veteran, and I got out 12 years ago, and this is my first time entering the workforce. So when I interviewed for the Cohen Clinic, it was my first job interview since I was 16 at an ice cream shop in high school, which clearly that does not compete with the level of, of, um, of what I'm trying, what I'm doing now, right? So I had a lot of anxiety around the whole thing because I had been out of the workforce for a long time, and I didn't know how to translate what I did in the military into civilianese, as we like to call it. Um, I used to work on aircraft, multi-million dollar aircraft. How does that translate into me helping people with their mental health and finding resources? So the way I did that was I reached out to the resources I had access to and did mock interviews. Um, I think that helped alleviate a lot of my anxiety because they were tossing like really hard questions at me. And I had, was really challenged and put on the spot. So it gave me a lot of practice for when it happened in real time. Um, while it didn't alleviate all of my anxiety, to be completely honest, I naturally have anxiety. I've been diagnosed and dealing with it for over 10 years. So while my anxiety was still present, it definitely made it more manageable when it came time to, to interview for my position. Um, another thing that I would like to remind people as veterans is our experience has a lot um, it, we bring a lot to the table with our military experience. Like typically we're disciplined. We can show up somewhere on time. Most of us are in um, positions of leadership. And so you just need to find ways to channel that into your new, your the new transition that you're going into with your career. Um, a couple of things that Jenny Lynn's mentioned that I wanted to touch on as well. I was also in therapy as I was preparing to re-enter the workforce. And I was very real with my therapist about, I mean, we've been working on anxiety for years, but this particular situation was really weighing on me. And so she also gave me tips, you know, like I could ground myself in the room and 
um, and find ways to make myself at least present like I was calm on the outside. And actually, it worked so well. My director said I came off so confident. She almost thought that I didn't take it seriously. She was like, you were so calm. I asked you hard questions and you just took them so well. I was like, either she's really good under pressure or maybe she's just using this as practice. Um, but it ended up obviously working out in my benefit. And to this day, that's really, she puts me in, um, I volunteered for a couple of situations that have been kind of challenging. And my calm demeanor when those situations, like interviews and, and with partners and stuff, is really what she's still amazed at how I'm able to do that. But that's years of therapy and just believing in myself and just practice. Um, I will say another tip that I do have uh, is now that we're in the virtual world, I think other in addition to the sticky note thing, maybe having a picture of your family up on your computer screen, like that's your motivation or your dog or whatever it is, the reason why you're going back into the, work, the workplace, whatever it is, whatever that goal is, it might be a picture of the sunset in Hawaii because you want to get a job and you want to go on this amazing vacation. Um, have something that motivates you within your field of vision. So they can't see it, but you can. And just as a quick reminder of why you want to stay so focused and work so hard at this interview and, and make it happen. Um, another thing I want to say is uh, with the virtual interviews is you can use hide self view. That way when you don't see the people that are interviewing, I mean, you don't see yourself when you're in an interview. So it looks more like a conversation. So, I mean, ideally when we're in person, right, we don't see ourselves and I personally get distracted by seeing myself on the screen all the time. And I catch myself kind of glancing over there to see, is my hair just right? Are my earrings twisted? Is my necklace, you know, backwards? So those simple things can be distracting when you're trying to make your, your best impression, right? Um, and another thing is uh, San Diego is really saturated with resources here for us veterans and military spouses. So just make sure you're reaching out. Uh, whether it be through me, the case manager of the Cohen Clinic, or the BCC, or any of these other amazing resources that we are mentioning in this uh, webinar. Just please don't hesitate, because you definitely have a lot to bring to the civilian workforce, and you de definitely um, grasp onto those tools that are available to you. And so you can get back into the workforce and then provide our, our community with all those great services that you definitely provide. Um, I think that's next slide. Okay, and then this is just how you can contact us at the Cohen Clinic. Um, you can either call our front desk or you can email us. And um, if you would like to follow us on our social media, we have um, some pretty good social media campaigns that go on. And also it finds a way to connect with our staff. If you, I know the hesitation for a lot of us to reach out for mental health is it's a stranger or you know it's just this, this person that we don't quite know. But we like to um, offer a spotlight on our staff pretty often to kind of humanize us. You can kind of get to know us before you kind of enter our care. But um, yeah, if you guys need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our phone number's right there and there's our email. And we offer all the amazing services that Jenny Lynn just spoke of earlier. So thank you guys. Thank you, Ashley and Jenny Lynn. We appreciate your insight and knowledge. And um, some key points that I'd like to point out is think, eat, organize. So important because you really need to, like as Jenny Lynn had said, you need to visualize yourself in this position and also visualize what brought you here. You earned this opportunity for this interview. Uh, you're not there because you walked in on your own. They selected you and they brought you in to meet with you. So you've already 50% of the way. The rest of it is just truly presenting yourself. Uh, be aware, one key critical piece, be aware of what is on your resume because of the simple facts that any interviewer will ask any question from that resume. And it could be something from your present position or most recent position or something three positions ago. Be always aware of what's on there and be prepared to answer those questions and speak to those points on your resume. And then in one of the biggest things and tips that I can share and to carry on to this one, breathe, breathe and pause. If you are in the middle, whether it's a presentation or you're having a conversation, potentially maybe in an interview, breathe and pause. When you are speaking, if you cannot recall what you're trying to say, take a pause, collect your thoughts, then go forward with what you're trying to say. It's the best approach to do versus having any potential multiple filler words or an awkward presentation or something that you may be trying to share and it comes out not in the manner you, you wish to do so. So breathe and pause, take the time to collect your thoughts. Your interviewer will appreciate that. All right, so with all of that said, I will turn us over to Melissa Murray. Melissa is amazing. Melissa comes to us. She is an image architect and style expert. She offers practical guidance to high achievers in design to strengthen their image, presence, style, influence, and most importantly, the confidence in high stakes situations. 
For example, the interview process. Melissa is an accomplished and award-winning vice president of sales, vice president of performance solutions, as well as vice president of marketing and development. By combining her corporate business and image expertise, Melissa has created a solid port portfolio of techniques that make her a trusted advisor and intricate part of client success. She also delivers straightforward, which I appreciate, and no nonsense approach to appearance, perception, and preparation. And she's been featured as an expert for multiple media outlets, including NBC, Fox News, iHeartMedia, as well as ESPN Radio, to name a few. Melissa, I will turn it over to you. I think you're muted, Melissa. I have a new computer, so I'm learning. <laughs> I don't have a mouse. I've got this and I'm not used to that. So thank you so much, Amy. But for all of you on this call and those of you who are going to be listening after the fact, um, I a very sincere heartfelt thank you to you and your spouses who have served in the military and to your families for all that you've done for the, the rest of us out here. So thank you very much for that. Um, what I'd like to do, I, this is about an hour long presentation, so I'm going to go fast, but I feel like this information is so important and there's a lot of words. So I want for you to just kind of use it as a checklist, print it off so that right before you go for an interview, you're like, yes, 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 I've got this. So Amy, let's dive right into the next slide. And you're going to see actually Jenny Lynn and Ashley. My sticky notes are right here too. So, and there will be some, a little bit of repetition here because um, everything that they talked about is so applicable to um, your image and your first impressions that you, that you give. So we're gonna talk not only about first impressions when you are doing um, an interview online, whether it's Skype, Zoom, whatever it is, or if you actually have the opportunity to go in person. So the reality is you've got three seconds, three to five seconds to make a first great and lasting impression. So think about this. It will take you three subsequent interactions or five hours to undo a bad first impression. I mean, who's going to give you that kind of time? So you really have to nail it. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. The first thing we're going to talk about is remote interviews. So here's where, um, here's an opportunity for you to really get prepared. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of shift my, my body because I want to show you um, what this looks like. So your camera, whether you're on a PC, whether you're on a laptop, an iPad, your camera should be at eye level. So my camera, my eyes are here. My camera is right here. It can be slightly above, but it should not be below. And here's the reason why. We've all seen those videos where you're looking up somebody's nose or somebody has created like a three chin thing happening. So you're trying to avoid that. And if you think about this, um, where we make contact and where we gain credibility is in our eyes. And in this case for remote interviews, some it's, it's changed a little bit because now you just, you want to have the face. The face should say everything. So your eyes, your smile, so make sure your camera is at eye level. Um, you can also tilt your, I'm gonna do it this way. So if your eye level and your laptop is like this, you can tilt it just ever so slightly if you want to appear to be thinner. So in this case, I've gained a little COVID weight, so I'm, I'm tilting this time. <laughs> but again, eye level, um, you wanna check ahead of time. You wanna check for sound in your microphone, your internet, um, and, and just, you do this with a friend. I did this, um, yesterday and this morning with my mom, because I'm actually, I, I'm not in my office right now. I'm in the dining room because I like this picture behind me. So it's okay if you move things around, but you have to check for everything. I, I, I told my mom, I'm looking in my kitchen right now and I'm like, do I have an echo in here? Do I, you know, so you just, it's good to role play. It's good to check your makeup or, or for women but it's just good to know what it sounds like on the other end. So you get a thumbs up ahead of time. There are endless opportunities for you to learn and understand the technology. And today's technology that we're on, it, we're in Zoom. Free tutorials, 
they give you everything. So there's no excuse for you to have technology issues the day of. If you have rehearsed, if you've done your homework. So, I mean, take a day, take a day and do your homework. You prepare your resume that might take days or weeks. Why wouldn't you do it when you have this opportunity with a potential employer? Um, so I wanna talk, the next thing I wanna talk about is creating proper lighting on your face, which can be a major issue for all of us. And I don't have all my equipment set up at, um, all the time. Um, we've got like on this side of me, I have all windows in my office. The reason I'm not doing this in my office, I've got windows that I, even though I have all the equipment, I can't possibly work around because there's so much natural lighting and I don't have room behind my desk to hang a, a, a ring light, which is what I have behind me. You don't have to spend any money. You do not have to spend any money. What you want to try to do is take your phone turn your camera on, hit the, hit the reverse button so you can see yourself and you just walk and you're gonna find, for me, my natural lighting is over here. And you're just gonna, and all of a sudden you'll see that your face will go from dark to light. So you wanna position yourself where you have the most natural lighting coming at you right here. The lighting shouldn't be coming from back here. I, I've got two windows right here, but I, I can counter it with the lighting that I have going on. So if you don't have a ring light, um, what you wanna do is get a lamp and I've got one, I wish I could turn my computer, but that's gonna mess everything up. I have my lamp that's from my bedroom sitting right here and all you need is natural LED lighting in those bulbs. And you would place it in this case, in most cases, if you don't have a window, you would place it right behind your computer. So it's gonna give, Here's the impact. You can see your face. You're not turning dark. Um, another reason I can't do it in my office is because the, the sunlight changes so quickly in there. I can't possibly counterbalance everything if I'm on a, an hour long call. So choose your, your space and place wisely so that the lighting is behind you. I'm sorry, in front of you and that you don't have all of these distractions behind you. Um, I want to talk about distractions in the background because this is a really big thing. So everybody's, I mean, I think we're all very proud of our homes and we're all very proud of where we live or where we're working. But what I tend to see a lot is a ton of clutter. You've got to clean it up. Like I love every person that's on this. I love Jenny Lynn. I love her bookcase behind it. She looks super smart, super, it's like, okay, she's, she's got it all going on. Ashley, she's got basic in the background. She, her face is front and forward. Carrie, same thing with you and Amy. So one of the things I'm gonna caution about having a um, superimposed background in the back is that it, it's working for Amy today. It doesn't always work. So you have to be really careful about, um, sometimes there's lag time. So your head's over here and then the background hasn't caught up and it's a lighting issue. So you've got to be really careful. And I think in this case, if you're doing an interview, I don't think you need to superimpose anything. I think you need to find a neutral space that's clean, decluttered, and at the very worst, press a sheet and hang it up. <laughs> I mean, that's the very worst. But you also want to give yourself um, a little bit of room between, in this case, here's my computer and I have about four feet behind me to create depth of space. So that also helps to not get the face so dark. So, um, and it doesn't make me look like, can you see the further I get away from the computer? Like I just shrink and then I'm not there. So in this case, when you're setting up your computer, you wanna have just a little bit of headroom, not much. Again, you're the focus right here. This is it. Anything back here is just complimentary to show class. That's it. But take the background off the table so that it doesn't become an issue. This, and I think everybody here on this call has done it really well. But you really, I mean, um, men and women, you want from here to here. That's it. You don't want to show torso. You don't want to show cleavage. You don't need to show... The, the clothes in this case need to be secondary. You need to focus on this, this background and the lighting. That's it. 
the clothes should be complimentary. Um, prepare your wardrobe. We're going to talk a lot about that. So I'll get to that in a minute. But um, as I mentioned earlier, you've got to practice. You've got to know where the sunlight is, where your lighting is. You've got to make sure you're you don't have echoes. You've got to make sure you take all the, the silly stuff off the table because the silly stuff is what will what will mess you up. I'm just saying because we've all seen it. So just don't don't let any of that be a factor in all of this. All right, next slide, Amy. I love this quote. I use this quote in, in almost all of my presentations. Part of success is pre preparation on purpose. You've got to practice. I didn't just show up here today and not understand what was going on. I mean, it practiced my presentation. I practiced the lighting. Just find a couple friends that you can trust and say, hey, I need to pick up the phone. I did this 20 minutes before our call as well. You got to make sure everything's right. I don't want to fail you and you don't want to fail your potential employer. So next slide. All right. This, and again, I think you'll start to see some similarities as we go on to what Ashley Lynn and Jane, Jenny Lynn and Ashley were saying. Um, you're going to dress like you're going to a face-to-face -face interview. Face-to-face -face interview. That means head to toe. So um, again, if you're only doing here to here, it's okay. What happens if I knock my water over and I've got to jump up? What happens if someone comes to the door unexpectedly and you're in your little short shorts or you're in your boxers or whatever it is, just take that off the table. And I also think that's a confidence thing because I feel like when we get dressed up and when we show up, oh, and especially in the midst of COVID, we don't get to get dressed up very often anymore, nor do we get to go anywhere. So you got to get yourself in that, that frame of mind that is, I look good. I feel good. I'm sitting up tall. I got this. Um, recheck all your equipment. Make sure your sound light. Everything is, is charged and ready to roll. Um, you got to make sure your phone is off. Anything that can ding, ring, including our, and we've got a, a uh, ring doorbell. I had to turn that off because even if my phone sounds are off, the ring doorbell still goes off. So, I mean, just little things that can, can trip you up. Um, okay, so here's, the, here's my favorite one. Don't stare at yourself. So I'm watching all of you over here, but so do as I say, not as I'm doing right now, because I'm looking down at the PowerPoint to make reference. So again, camera is at eye level and the entire time you should be looking straight into the camera. It's, it's second nature to look down and want to talk to the person. So in this case, I want to be looking at all of you beautiful women, but I need to be here. So here again is where you're going to make the eye contact. It's not normal. It doesn't feel good because I want to be looking at you going, yes, yes, yes. Like I got it. We can't do that in this particular case when we're remote. So keep the eyes here. You look down, but then look back up. So you're welcome to look at the presenter, but then you, when you answer the question, you've got to be back up here, right here. So I know that doesn't feel normal on any level. Um, proper posture. So in this case, um, what you want to do is scooch to the front of your chair. I, in this case, I'm sitting a pub, pub style chair because I know that's gonna make me put the posture where it needs to be. So shoulders back, I have a pillow behind me that makes me sit on the front of the chair, okay? So there's your proper posture, proper posture. Why can't I talk all this said pop, proper posture? And then hands, you just want them to sit gently right in front of you. And it is okay to talk with your hands, by the way, just a little bit. So if I'm making a point of one, so only use your hands if they're going to, to do something for you. If, they, if it has no purpose, leave it, let it be. Again, that's also a great reason why you're gonna stay here to here, because I can still do my hands down here, I can do this over here if I need to, easy enough. No distractions. Um, this means no family, no pets, no noise, no kids. Um, this morning, right when I got out of bed, I put a note on the front door that says, please do not not disturb reporting of progress. You cannot have someone knock on your door in the middle of an interview <laughs> or even have UPS or Amazon, you know, knock, knock, knock. Nope, take that off the table as well. Again, I can't say, I know it's difficult with kids and animals and 
but you owe it to yourself in the middle of an interview, a money-making interview to get rid of the distractions, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, however you have to do it. If that means locking the door, I think people are very forgiving, but when you're talking about an interview, your livelihood, you've got to take every precaution so that again, the little things don't become big things or that they don't distract. Again, this is the focus right here, this, not the kids, not the background, not the dog. So again, just take away that um, potential trouble. Uh, you're, you can keep all the tools that you need within reach. Have your water, have your notepad, have your pen. So if you need to take notes, all of that's great, but then eliminate any clutter around you. That's a confidence thing, right? Because when we see clutter and we feel clutter, we don't feel confident. So take that off the table. Okay, next slide. All right, what to wear on camera. This slide is so easy compared to what I'm gonna show you what not to wear. <laughs> There's, the, rules are, the rules for what not to wear are so much greater than what you can and should wear. So I love um, Regal Royal primary colors. They do so well on camera. So blue, greens, reds, orange, purples, yellows. Um, I would say, and black as well, Yellow, be careful if you don't have the proper lighting. Yellow is great when you're in a studio, when you've got all the right lighting. Um, it does tend to wash you out just a little bit. So if you've got a light background, those are great colors. Um, you can do pastels and neutrals. If you, if let's say that I had a navy wall behind me, then I could pull off the pastels and the neutrals. But in general, um, I like to stick to the blues, the greens, the reds, the yellows, and, and varying colors uh, in terms of tones. Just be, be careful with pastels. It's, it works for, in this case, based on um, Amy's background, she's got a pastel on, it works great because she's got all these beautiful regal royal tones behind her. I'm a fan of um, anything navy. Navy does very well. You can't go wrong with navy, can't go wrong with cobalt blue, um, oranges, reds, um, you can't go wrong with a purple as well. I'm just going to say that. Um, but thick cotton and matte fabrics, things that aren't shiny and reflective, same thing with your jewelry, um, and we'll get to that. But camera friendly clothing, uh, you just, in this case, you really have to know the, the culture of the organization that you're speaking to. So if they're, you gotta, you're still dressing for your job, the job that you want, plus the promotion and the promotion after that. So if, if this is a business casual, dress better than business casual. So just don't do what they're already doing. There's a reason they're hiring. They're looking for someone new, someone better, someone who has more skills. So dress for the job that you want. All right, next slide. All right, this is the one, like this is where I'm saying, do not self-sabotage here because these opportunities are huge. All right, Amy, next slide. Here are the things that I want. I made this slide intentionally very busy because I want to show you what this looks like on camera. Um, like all of the muted colors in the middle, avoid those if you can. The pattern and texture on the bottom, avoid them if you can. Avoid stripes close-knit patterns, um, visible textures for men, bow ties, graphic t-shirts, hoodie, athleisure wear. Men, you have it really easy compared to women. Women have all these choices. <laughs> men have less choices. So women, I, anything I can name here, and there's probably 30 or 40 more that I can name. Ruffles, they tend to put weight on you. Fringe, fur, sequence. I mean, you could, oh, I have fur in there twice. I, I really meant fur, just in case you were wondering, no fur. Um, anything that has um, nothing sleeveless, in this case of an interview, I, I, I'm not saying never on Zoom or Skype. I'm just saying in the case of an interview, no cutouts, no oversized garments. All that's going to do is just put weight on you. Um, again, no athleisure, no hair accessories or scarves. And I say that a scarf is going to add bulk. 
hair accessories are going to reflect light and they're just going to distract any again we're saying here in the eyes and in the face not not what's going on here um no busy animal prints for heaven's sakes please don't do animal prints or lace that is a big no-no um again this is meant to be your checklist like yep got this yep nope not doing that not doing that no plunging necklines again if you take this from here to here you've taken the breast off the table um no bangle bracelets because we as women we tend to talk with our hands and the the you know the um, stacked bracelets are so in style right now but they clink and they make noise and they can echo so um take those off the table as well all right next slide let's talk about in-person interviews because it is bound to happen again at some point in our lifetime so next slide I'm going to go through this really fast, but again, this is your checklist. I want to I want to keep us um, timely and on task. For men, and this is for women as well. Two-piece matching suit, tie, silk with minimal print. Um, the shirt, um, always a long sleeve shirt. Never do unless you're doing a sports coat, and that's the environment. You could do a polo and a sports coat, but in this case, again, we're dressing for the dream job, so. Always long sleeve shirt. If you have cufflinks or pocket square, that's always a nice touch, but not a must. Again, use what you have. I'm not saying go out and buy and spend a lot of money. Use what you have in your closet. Just make sure um, that it looks polished and tailored, that it's like that you feel so confident. Like we all have those um, outfits that when we walk in a room, everybody goes, oh my gosh, you look amazing. Okay. Oh my God. That is hilarious, Jordan. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This happens all the time. I was thinking about this when you were talking about no distractions. I'm like, this dog's in here. He's coming. That is awesome. <laughs> but think about the outfits that you have on when people go, you look so good. Think about what colors you're wearing, what you're doing, what makes you feel good and confident because pay it, like, those people are paying you a compliment for a reason. And that means it's either they're your colors that looks best on you, the suit is fitted properly. Um, so just pay attention to that. And I think we all know what we look best in. I mean, I think we walk taller, we stand prouder, we we it's just it's just who we are. Like for me, it's shoes. When I've got my shoes on, oh, when I'm on calls, I pace because now I'm strutting my stuff and I walk with confidence and I've opened up my all my, my chest chakra, my throat, throat chakra. So if you're one of those people, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna digress for just a second. If you are one of those people that needs to stand up, then just put your computer on a couple of books up higher and stand up. If that's how you need to open up and express yourself, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. So do whatever it is that you need to get to the other side. Um, I'm gonna let you read the, the the rest of these slides again it's your checklist we're going to move on real quick because there's um i i don't want to run out of time but we will so um general guidelines for women oh i didn't realize this was one of those slides again two-piece matching suit or a dress in this case um solid one color so your um your suit whatever you're wearing the top and the bottom should match in terms of print but um so if it's if you're wearing a black suit you would wear black pants matching black pants you don't want to do a solid jacket and then a pinstripe pant or something like that like in this case again all we're trying to do is keep the focus here and here and what's coming out of your mouth all your your specific talents um tailored blouses dresses um if you're wearing a skirt or a dress they should be knee length or longer because remember when you sit down, those dresses tend to, or the skirts tend to creep up just a little bit. We talked about the jewelry, nothing clanky. Err on the side of conservative and I'm not conservative, but today I wanted to, I mean, I have a little necklace on when I usually do like, ah, but you know, again, I wanna, I wanna lead by example here. So conservative, non-clanky um, makeup, err on the side of natural and minimal if you can. Um, Jordan, I noticed that you have glasses and I have a feeling one of your questions is going to be, um, should I wear glasses or shouldn't I wear glasses? And in this case, the answer is you need to look like you. So the answer is yes. 
So I will send you a link and it will tell you how to not create. So in this case, I have my ring light, how not to have, or if you're in the middle of a window, how not to have the reflection in the sunglasses and the glasses. So look like you. So if you wear glasses every day, wear glasses in this particular case. Shoes, no more than three inch heels, hosiery, back in style, just sheer and plain, nothing crazy. All right, Amy. So I'm gonna reiterate what Jenny Lynn was saying. Um, eat a healthy breakfast. The day of an important meeting, this is so, so important. Um, avoid, avoid caffeine. Because what happens in this case, the day of an interview or the day of an important meeting, your adrenaline gets going. So now you have caffeine, adrenaline, and now you look, you're like, I'm shaking. So you, what you want to do is drink room temperature water, room temperature lemon water, room temperature anything, or you can, and the reason I say room temperature, it's because the way our um, saliva glands are, if we drink warm or cold, we get dry mouth. So you're trying to, we're already, we're already getting dry mouth because we're, goodness sakes, we're going to an interview and this is big time. So again, that's why we say drink room temperature water. So I just think the best thing is just have a bottle of water with you and call it good. A drop of Visine in each eye, um, just to take out any swelling or redness and just create the, the whites of your eyes will be like, bam. Um, avoid wearing sunglasses while driving because I don't have my sunglasses here, but even if I take my glasses, we all know that right here, it creates an indentation potentially that could take 20 minutes to go away. So um, no sunglasses while driving or get there early enough where you can sit in your car, look at your resume, review, get grounded, do your breathing. Um, again, no chewing gum, opt for mints or spray. The gum creates the same thing as coffee or a cold or hot water where it dries out the mouth. So pop a mint and you're good to go or just do a quick spray. And no eating or drinking while driving. Um, this is just, if you spill something, the stress level goes up. You don't have what you need to get out of stain, that type of thing. So again, just take away the easy stuff. That's it. Okay, next slide. Oh, this is one of my favorite slides. So we're, we'll just do it real quick. We'll practice together. So eye contact. And this is, again, what we've been talking about this whole time is this eye contact with the camera, eye contact with um, whoever it is that you're talking to in person. Um, it's a great tool for influencing others. And if you maintain eye contact 60, per, six, 60 to 70% of the time, you create a sense of emotional connection. So that's really important. So in one-on-one -on -one settings, guys, this is hard. Hold eye contact for seven to 10 seconds. So we're gonna practice it together. I want everyone just to stop what they're doing Look into your camera for 10 seconds. And we'll do it together because this is, it's hard. Okay, let's do it together. Ready? Look in your camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How hard is that? That is not easy. And especially when you're, you have someone right in front of you, it's easy to look around and go, oh, oh, oh. So um, that, that is, it's hard to do, but you should, you should practice it because we usually we only hold eye contact for one or two seconds. That is the norm because we've got all this stuff going on. So be sure to hold eye contact. And in group settings, three to five, and usually because you're going to be looking at different people in the group. So, all right, next slide. Ah. Yes, so people who tend to hold eye contact appear to be of a higher status and more trustworthy. So um, we, we talked a little bit about body language today. You know, we talked about, you know, put the pillow behind you, sit at the front of your chair. I don't know if any of you have seen um, Amy Cuddy's presentation on body language. If you haven't, I'll send that to Amy and Amy can get that out to you as well. Um, but she talks a lot about, and this is really important, especially for women, um, women, we tend to cross our legs, which is not a problem in an interview. You absolutely can cross your legs, but we also tend to, to our, our hands go like, you can't see my hands, but down, down here. And we tend to go like this and we tend to, our shoulders come over. And what happens is we'll start creating cortisol instead of testosterone. So the day when you walk in, whether you are online or going to a meeting, 
you need to stand up, you need to stretch out. Think about the power pose. Think about superwoman, both feet on the ground, feet are um, hip length apart. Hands are, can't do it right now, but I can, I can see. I, hands are here like this, right? Hands on the hips. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're breathing it all in, just as the lady said, breathe in and get yourself big. If you need to go to the bathroom right before you get there for the interview, do it. Stand up, stretch, get the, get the testosterone going. It's gonna make sure your shoulders are back. You don't wanna be creating cortisol because we shrink. We don't want the female hormone in this case for an interview. I'm not saying you need to be a man. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying, be the best and captivating and confident person that you can be because it's going to show passion and you're going to feel much more comfortable. So again, okay to cross your legs in an interview. It's just this you don't want to do. You don't want to shrink. You don't want to get yourself closer to them or closer. You need to create a neutral space around yourself. Um, for men, I think one of my biggest pet peeves for in terms of body language is putting your hands in your pocket and jingling keys or money. It is not good. No one should have their hand, men or women should not have their hands in their pocket ever during the interview process. Not when working, walking in, not when meeting somebody in the front foyer area, do not put your hands in your pocket. It is a, it, it, it's a big no, no, and a big red flag. Um, I'm trying to think what else in terms of body language. Um, if you are in an in-person interview, it is okay to have your portfolio or your notes and you can take notes. Don't, don't have your phone and don't sit there on your phone. It looks like you're texting. So again, you need to be a hundred percent present. Um, okay. We, I know we're close on time. So I think Amy's going to open it up for questions. And, um, this was so fun. I can't believe we got through all these slides. <laughs> We did that fast, so I'm sorry for talking fast, but I wanted to make sure that you had as much information as you possibly could so that you have a successful interview and um, can do great things and share your, your expertise with the world, because I know it's great. Thank you, Melissa. Always valuable information from you. Uh, a couple of highlights that I wanted to point out is one of the most critical things is a solid first impression is extremely critical. It is so important. And it goes along with what you mentioned about eye contact. In my opinion, eye contact is as important as that solid first impression, as well as the handshake. When you have that eye contact, it's similar to a handshake. And when you meet somebody for the first time, you want to make sure you give them a solid handshake, a good firm handshake. I was taught that a long time ago when I dove into my first sales experience. I was working within a male dominated sales position. I was the first female at the company and the advice I received was always make sure you hold eye contact and provide a firm handshake upon every first introduction. And I've carried that with me and it's so important. Um, always have that neutral space and clean background behind you. It's as if it's similar to when you're selling a house, you don't wanna have a lot of clutter. Make sure that it's clean lines, clean space, don't have any distractions. Um, and then one of the biggest things too that Melissa touched on is dress how you want to feel. If you want to feel comfortable and, and relaxed and laid back, great. But you're not in the interview to feel comfortable, relaxed and laid back. You're in the interview to gain that su successful position and land the job. So dress how you want to feel, dress professional and put that best foot, foot, best foot forward when doing so. All right. So Thank you both to all of our presenters. We truly do appreciate you taking the time and putting all of this information together for our military members, the veterans, and then their families and spouses. Um, what I'd like to do is just remind everyone to continue to keep Vets Community Connections in your thoughts when you do have a request or a desire to be connected to something within San Diego's community. Just a quick highlight of what we can offer is again, this career networking opportunities, awareness of what's available in San Diego, uh, how to improve upon your approach to that job search, education and training opportunities, exclusive business discounts, recreation, arts, volunteerism, entertainment, scholarship. There's so many scholarship programs, not only for those that are college bound, but as well for the youth sports and athletes, as well as the individuals that might be into dance or various art programs. There's a lot available in San Diego and we have access to that. So please reach out to us. And it's as simple as contacting us through our website or calling us directly. 
Carrie, next slide. All right, so I will wrap that up as we are right at the end today. And I would like to share that on Tuesday, April 27th, we will have our April Careers in the Community webinar featuring Booz Allen Hamilton and DeVry Institute. So be on the lookout for the, the link on how to register for that. We will release that within the next day or so, I believe. Be on the lookout as well for the surveys and please do fill out those surveys. As a reminder, again, I'll reiterate this. We do read those, we do take it to heart, and we do appreciate all of your feedback to help us continue to build these out. So thank Amy, you, everyone. Ask, oh, sorry. Can I ask Jenny a question real quick? Sure. Um, hi, uh, Jenny. Um, I was just wondering for the, the breathing techniques that you had mentioned and uh, for uh, the, uh, you know, specifically how to breathe, do you have any recommendations for our, our audience? Um, maybe specific websites um, or uh, to go to or apps um, or if they're um, if if you can uh, let them know if they're already on your websites where um, they can find it. Um, uh, it's just so, wanted to, uh, to ask. Sure, I will send Amy an email with some of those things, but just off the top of my head. Um, we in San Diego, our clinic is actually one of 19 clinics currently open across the country, um, soon to be 25. So we are part of a larger Cohen Veterans Network. And on mm -hmm. the Cohen Veterans Network page, there's actually uh, a toolkit for managing stress and anxiety specifically created for military families that addresses some of those things like breathing and reducing anxiety. There's also a link there for... Um, multiple webinar presentations that have been done by therapists from all of our our communities um, in the 19 clinics that address breathing, that address anxiety. So we have a variety of resources just within Cohen that I would encourage people to check out that have been created by licensed clinicians um, and, and other community members that we work with. Okay. So that's CohenVeteransNetwork.org. That's like our main network page. Okay. So they can actually go to the website and then they'll find the, the link to, to, to further explore that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. There's a link to the toolkit there and it's also Cohen Veterans Presents. There's like a Presents tab and it'll have all of the presentations that we've done on oh, everything wow. um, okay. listed there. And it's all by... Um, you can search by like theme. So if you want anxiety, it'll come up with what, what we have there. Okay, great. Oh, thank you so much. Sure. Um, while we were just discussing that too, and with Annette and Jenny Lynn, I just did get a question within my messages. So the question I have is, I have an interview tomorrow and because of the nature of the job, my interview panel consists of my potential immediate supervisor who is a strength and conditioning coach as well as two firefighters. Do you have any advice specific to this type of an interview situation? I already have a good amount of, I've done a good amount of research on firefighters in the area and what types of physical abilities they should be capable of, but this particular type of situation, what would you recommend? It could be anybody. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna, I, yeah. I can't speak to firefighters per se, but uh, my interview was with my immediate supervisor um, before it was with like the bigger organization. And I think the, the best thing in that case is just making a connection with that immediate supervisor. That's the person you're going to be working most closely with. And so finding those common areas, like when you're asked a question, if you've already done the research, you know what that company stands for, you know what they do, and it's speaking to how you can come into those situations with your own strengths, that's going to build that bond with who's going to be your supervisor and really set you up for success in that way. 